Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with another Pittsburgh Steelers tape breakdown and analysis. No, it's been a couple weeks since the Steelers signed Dwayne Haskins to a reserve futures contract, but I wanted to go through some of his tape and talk about the one specific area of his game, and there were certainly several areas on and also off the field Haskins has to improve on to become the quarterback that people thought he would be when he was taken in the first round. But one specific area in particular we'll cover today where he has to get better, and that's reading and throwing against zone coverage. Here's a fun fact for you about Dwayne Haskins. That was 14 career interceptions, 11 of them have come against zone coverage. So we'll go through some of those today, some of the struggles in terms of reads and processes and things like that um, to, to look towards Haskins and how he can improve as he becomes a Pittsburgh Steeler. Good example here against Green Bay, Haskins' rookie season, and I give him credit here for making a full field read going from his right to his left, but this ball ends up being late because of that and not thrown with good accuracy to the sidelines. And, you know, you could argue this is a forced throw, but I will give context here. There's eight seconds left in the quarter, and so you have to go to the sidelines here. I'm not mad at that, although Washington does have two timeouts here. But I understand throwing to the sideline here on this corner route, but this accuracy and this ball placement has to be better. It has to be out towards the sideline. It's late. It's behind. Safety jumps it and picks it off. And so that's just not good ball placement. Throw it to the sideline. If it goes out of bounds, it goes out of bounds. Um, but just, you know, it's got to be a mentality of either your guy's going to make the play or no one's going to make the play because that ball is so far to the inside. It's that outside shoulder to the sideline and where that would also lead your receiver out of bounds if he catches it too, which would help a little bit with time running low. Um, Haskins just not a great job here in terms of getting the ball out on time. And then more importantly, the placement of the throw is poor and it leads to the interception against this too high look by the Packers. Facing the Browns this past season in 2020, Cleveland's going to be in a a cover four quarters shell here, four deep, three underneath, and Haskins just throws it right to where the linebacker's at, and the receiver's trying to sit down on these deep curl route past the the sticks, but, um, I mean, the linebacker is right there, so that is just a poor read from Haskins, and maybe there's a chance that the receiver didn't run this at the right depth. It's, you know, you can never exactly tell maybe on, on some of these communication type problems, but I'm guessing the issue is probably more on Haskins here than it is going to be his target intended receiver. So look at it from the end zone view. There's just really isn't the window there. Um, you can't throw deep. I get that against quarters, but uh, I mean, that's <laughs> just not a window for a quarterback to throw into. Check it out from the top down view. And I know it's third and 15. You're trying to make a play, but you got to be able to be smart on third down. You know, the defense is going to sink. They're going to, you know, not let you throw to the sticks and you can't try to force that throw, whether that means just hitting your check down and letting him try to make a play in space punt. uh, You'll live with that as opposed to a turnover, which is what happens here in a pretty crucial moment of the game. You're only down four. You know, you don't have to get a bunch of points. If you punt and get a stop, then you still got a chance to play. But now the Browns are starting a drive in. Uh, field goal range, and uh, it really puts yourself in a tough spot. So just a force throw here instead of just making a profit and taking a punt if, if you have to. One of the better examples of Haskins really just forcing a throw versus zone coverage. Um, Cleveland here playing a three-deep zone and just trying to get it to this receiver uh, right here on the numbers, but there's just no window there, and there has to be a better option than that, and it's just a force throw. And I get the NFL is all about tight windows. It's not college football, but uh, you're just not going to make a lot of profit, make a lot of hay trying to throw into those type of windows against zone coverage. Defenders who have eyes on you can jump the route. Man coverage is one thing. Uh, zone coverage is another thing. And it's just a really poor decision, a poor read here and process from Haskins. Just never getting off that read, forcing that throw, gets picked off. Um, this is on third and seven. So again, trying to make a play on third down, you get that, but you can't make a throw in that window. It's not going to happen versus zone. Find another option, extend the play, do something else, hit your check down. Uh, You cannot turn the ball over there, give the Browns a really short field and uh, really costly here. Haskins also in the Browns game threw three picks in this game. We're looking at all three of them here, all against zone coverage. And on this one, it's a single high look. You're trying to throw the seam ball with a linebacker with good coverage. Uh, That's just not going to help. I mean, you're not going to be able to make that throw on this play. It's this three deep zone and a linebacker carries it. And it's a really tight window and it gets tipped and picked off by the safety over the top who gets it a long run back. So really just costly plays. And for whatever it's worth, this comes on second and 25. So it feels like in some of those long yardage situations, Haskins trying to make the play, get everything back, make that, you know, great throw on third and 15. And uh, it's just not at that level right now. And he's just trying to force some of these throws. Linebacker carries it, gets picked off. Uh, you cannot try to throw that seam with a linebacker low walling it and the safety over the top. Good way to get your receiver really injured. And that's also a good way to get intercepted 
as well. So check, check it out from the end zone view. No pressure on this play, just with a four-man rush. I know he's trying to fit this over the top, and if it was too high, if it was cover two, you know, maybe you say if you throw it over the top, your you know, tight end's able to make a play. But this one, the anchor sees off. The safety's right there. If it is cover two, that ball probably just falls harmlessly uh, incomplete. But against single high, trying to throw that seam, not going to work too well if you're off. Um, it's going to get picked. If you're on target, your receiver, your tight end's probably going to get his head taken off. Really poor decision here from Haskins versus Seattle against this three deep zone. He's trying to hit this over route here to the receiver, but he's running right into the window of the cornerback who's passing off this vertical seam route to the deep, uh, you know, free safety and just throws it right to the corner and gets jumped and picked off. And that's just one of the better examples of him not processing versus zone that, yes, this is trying to flood the route, this little Yankee concept with the post and the over, but because the cornerback's passing this off in this three deep to the safety. Uh, he's just now going to match this over out coming across in his window and picks it off. And it's an interception for Seattle. So, again, Haskins struggling with some of his processing, uh, reading the defense, anticipating ball placement. You're seeing those issues pop up against any sort of coverage because he's just really struggled in his two years with Washington, but especially versus zone. Again, 11 of his 14 career interceptions have come versus zone coverage. And you just see a really poor read here. And you make a poor read and a poor decision in the NFL. Defenses are going to make you pay, and Seattle certainly does on this play. Finally, last example versus Carolina, trying to hit this little corner route to the tight end, Logan Thomas. He runs a nice route, but the underneath zone defender is sitting there, picks it off. Uh, Haskins cannot throw it over the top of him, and maybe he knew he was there and was just trying to you know, be able to, to loft it over the top, uh, but obviously did not do that well enough here. But I'm not sure if I would make that throw anyway with that underneath hook defender. And uh, on this play, again, hit your check down, let him make a play as opposed to trying to throw it over the top and let your back make a play in space. In the context of this first and 10, it is 13 nothing, but, you know, it's first and 10 when it's not third and, you know, got to have it type situation. Uh, so you can just check it down, let your running back get six, seven yards. If he breaks a tackle, makes that linebacker miss, and you got a first down. That way, that is the better option. And again, the running theme here versus zone coverage. Haskins, I think, struggles a lot more against zone than he does man, not that he's very good against man coverage, but better versus man when things are a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to read. And it's more about the physical talent of velocity and placement and things like that. Although, as we're seeing here, even against zone, his placement uh, can be poor. And you're seeing on this example as well, where he doesn't get the floft. And uh, just, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know if he didn't see the defender or saw him and just made a poor throw. But either way, obviously, not a good rep for Dwayne Haskins. So it starts with film study, work ethic, putting in the work, those of Obviously been been questioned by people that covered him in Washington. I'm not saying he can't turn things around or that he won't turn things around. It's all up to Dwayne Haskins, but um, we'll find out. But I think the way that that he processes and reads zone coverage, if we see improvements there, it's probably telling you that he's starting to turn the corner. He's uh, becoming a more knowledgeable player. His football IQ is growing, and we're certainly rooting for that. But we'll see what happens, and we'll see him whenever we may see him as the number three quarterback in Pittsburgh. Who knows when that'll be? Hopefully in the preseason, hopefully in training camp, but who knows how this thing is going to go. But zone coverage, the biggest thing for Dwayne Haskins to work on. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.